Our guest is Tom Pelissero. He's the NFL writer for USA Today, talking about the uh, the absence of Ryan Clady for the Broncos in the 2015 season. Let, let's turn it to uh, an article that you wrote about uh, just in the last day, and that is Adrian Peterson and the Minnesota Vikings. Um, Vikings head coach Mike Zimmer came out with a pretty strong statement. He said, Adrian Peterson can either play for us or not play at all. And Tom, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, Peterson is already unhappy with Vikings management and the way they handled uh, the abuse case, the, the child abuse case. This can't make him feel much better about going back to work for these guys, can it? That was my first reaction when I saw how strongly Mike Zimmer said it publicly. But what you have to understand is this message has been very clear behind closed doors for months. The, the, the Vikings were not going to budge for all the, the speculation about trade, the speculations about retirement. None of it was likely to happen. The, the Vikings had no interest whatsoever moving Adrian Peterson. They never got a single offer for him before or during the draft. And that night in Chicago at the draft, I was with Peterson's agent, Ben Dogger. I did a behind-the-scenes thing with him uh, you know, throughout that draft day in the green room with him, working the phones and all that. And you know, by the time we talked when the day was over, his message had changed from, well, do we, want, we want out. We want Peterson to play someplace else, to, Okay, the Vikings have made clear Peterson's very important to them. Now show us how important that Adrian Peterson is to the Vikings organization, which means guaranteeing part of a contractor right now has three years and $46 million in non-guaranteed money left on it. The Vikings have not approached Ben Dogger about adjusting Peterson's contract. I think there's a lot of different reasons uh, that that is. But what they're going to have to decide for themselves is, are they willing to tolerate the reports and the questions and the nonsense and anything that might seep into the locker room or the coaching staff in terms of doubt about Adrian Peterson being part of the team. Do they move and give Peterson what he wants, which is guaranteeing this year and next year on his contract, uh, try to get him into camp, get the media circus out of the way in June instead of August, or do you do what they're doing now, which is you know, they cover their eyes, they plug their ears, and they say, we're not, you know, we're, we're confident that he's going to show up. I think, I think no matter what, Peterson's there September 14th, but how long do you want the drama to drag out? And is that worth not guaranteeing money that if all goes well, you're probably paying him anyway? Yeah, Tom, I, you wrote about it in your article in USA Today. Uh, players of his character, players of his caliber, I should say, they do have leverage. Despite the fact they're under contract, if they're unhappy, teams usually move guys like that. They can force trades. Why would the Vikings want such an unhappy guy in their locker room? I think, uh, for one thing, he's a really good football player. Because the guy was the MVP three years ago. Uh, he's a, a game-changing sort of a player. Yeah, but he's Tom, it can, be can, it can be cancerous. You know that. No, you're right. But you're saying, why do they want him? That's why they want him. He's a damn good player. And because they got a young quarterback in Teddy Bridgewater who can have a lot of weight taken off his shoulders by playing with a guy like Peterson, your fear... And I don't know how much the Vikings buy into it, but if you're taking the doomsday scenario, the fear would be Peterson shows up. He's not happy. Peterson has not been a, you know, a destructive force behind the scenes. He's always been somebody who's been positive for the organization, uh, positive with his teammates, positive in the community. He's over there shaking hands when they got the approval at the Capitol for the billion-dollar stadium. But if this guy comes in, after everything that's gone on, and by the way, self-inflicted at its base level, because Adrian Peterson got himself in trouble and set off this entire chain of events, that has left us uh, where we are today. But if he comes in and is telling the young guys on the team, hey, I'm one of the best players on the on the planet, they're not taking care of me, I don't think they're going to take care of you, that can become ingrained in people. And then all of a sudden when he has a sore hamstring or he's got a sprained ankle and he's sitting back and saying, I have no guaranteed money, I'm not going to put bad film out there, I'm going to take a week or two off. Again, that would be against the character that the Vikings have seen from Adrian Peterson. But if that happens at a bad time of year because Adrian Peterson is not pleased with how everything has been handled, that can affect you on the field. So the Vikings have to take all that into consideration. All right, last thing, and you touched on it a little bit. Might this be a ploy by Adrian Peterson to get the final two years of his three-year deal guaranteed? That's 100% of what it is. I don't think there's anything else. I mean, the, the idea that he still wants to be traded, well, sure. You know, I want a lot of things. I'd love to be paid $13 million this year. It's not going to happen. You get to a certain point, in this case the draft, and your expectations change. What you realistically think you might be able to get has to shift. And so as unhappy as Pearson might be 
with how he was treated by certain people in the organization or whatever he thinks was happening behind closed doors, none of it matters, okay? That's not changing. What he still potentially can get is some sort of contractual guarantee. He made a statement to ESPN last night confirming this much and saying this is about securing his future with the Minnesota Vikings. Well, if they don't secure his future, you're talking about two more weeks of OTAs and then a mandatory mini camp and then into training camp. We'll see, because this is a strong-willed guy that you're talking about. How far is he willing to push this beat? How much is he going to allow this to be circling over the Vikings' heads? At what point does he cave? I strongly believe it will happen before September 14th, but it's a lot different just organizationally if that happens next week as opposed to three months from now. Tom, really appreciate it. Uh, we know we can find you USA Today. Uh, what's your Twitter handle? At Tom Pelissero, and, you know, Google it, and they'll, I'm sure, correct the spell. All right. <laughs> Thanks, man. Really appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Tom Pelissero of USA Today.